The story begins with a beautiful girl named Amaya Haruko, a second-year student of the academy and vice president of the student council. Haruko is Takaru's childhood friend who hasn't seen him for a long time, and when she finds out that Takaru wants to enter Tenmai Academy just like her, Haruko immediately intends to meet him and go to school together. However, Takaru is still not dressed properly when Haruko enters his room, and Haruko almost falls on Takaru's belongings. Then, Takaru immediately protects her. But they both fell, and Takaru showed her his sausage. Haruko beat Takaru mercilessly, and they immediately rushed to school. On the way, Haruko asked Takaru what his motivation was to enter Tenmai Academy. Takaru replied that Tenmai Academy was a school for beautiful girls, and he was very bored with school life filled with men. When she arrived at school, Haruko left Takaru to prepare for the new student admission ceremony. Left alone, Takaru decided to walk after the beautiful girls he had never seen. Then, without realizing it, Takaru arrived at a field. He saw two girls fighting with extraordinary strength, each with superpowers. Takaru, who saw this, thought that he was dreaming because of the tremendous power they released. Then, a beautiful girl named Haimgami was seen with a Shikigami named Gummy. She was watching the fight and was surprised to see Takaru. Then Haimgami fell from the top of the tree she was climbing and landed right on Takaru's body, accidentally. Takaru also got Haimgami's first kiss and had the opportunity to see her underwear. An emotional Haimgami tried to beat Takaru up, but she abandoned her intention after she saw the strange mark on Takaru's chest. Then Takaru rushed to the gymnasium to attend the admission ceremony. While looking at Takaru, who ran away, Haimgami said she had found her enemy. Arriving at the gymnasium, Minori, the principal, made a speech. She explained that the students would receive elements that would be used to fight for 8 Maken, because by getting 8 Maken, their future would be guaranteed. Takaru, who heard this, was confused because he did not understand what the principal meant. Minori, who realized that many new students did not understand, told the senior students to practice it. And suddenly Haimgami came on stage to volunteer to fight. But unexpectedly, she chose Takaru as her sparring partner. Haruko tried to prevent the fight because Takaru was a new student who knew nothing. But the principal instead allowed Haimgami to fight Takaru. The fight began, and Haimgami, who thought Takaru was the enemy she had been looking for, tried to kill him. She immediately removed the lightning elemental move and aimed it at Takaru's body. But unexpectedly, a cute, beautiful girl appeared and parried Haimgami's attack to protect Takaru. Everyone in the place was shocked to see her strength, especially since the power she used was one of the original eight Maken. Inaho also claims to be Takaru's fiancé, who will always protect him. Haruko, jealous to hear this, immediately released a powerful killing aura. That afternoon, Haruko, who also served as the head of the dormitory, rushed to Takaru's room. But she was shocked after seeing Inaho there. Inaho also said they had been allowed to live in the same room if engaged. But Haruko became even more shocked after learning that our Haimgami lived in Takaru's room. Finally, Haruko did not want to be outdone and joined the four in the room to maintain order between boys and girls who lived together. Since then, Takaru's life with the three beautiful girls has begun. The next day, while at school, Takaru and Inaho became the center of attention because of yesterday's incident. Then Takaru's homeroom teacher, Tamika, instructed the students to do a physical examination in the school health room. Takaru and his classmate Yuzui immediately asked permission to go to the toilet to watch the girls in the school health room. But both of them were caught by Haimgami, and they were immediately beaten. Then, it was Takaru's turn to do a physical examination. The students were required to put their hands into a machine to analyze the talent and suitability of the Makin he would use. But the device could not detect anything from Takaru. It could not even tell what Makin was suitable for Takaru. This incident also made the teacher who examined Takaru panic. Since this was the first time since Tenbai Academy was founded, Minori called Takaru and Inaho to come to his room. Jen insisted that his machine was fine, but he was also confused as to why. In this new school year, three students could not be detected by his machine. One of them is Inaho, who already has the original Makin. Minori also said that Takaru's current situation is very dangerous. Without Makin, Takaru has no self-defense from other people's attacks. Takaru also had to wait one month to use the special Makin that Jen would prepare for him. After that, Takaru, Inaho, and Haruko traveled around to look at the clubs at Tenbai Academy. Finally, Takaru decided to join the photography club, and Inoha wanted to join the club with Takaru. But Haruko, who heard this, immediately thought negatively and suspected that Takaru would do something with Inoha. 
Aruko also offered him to join the Makin Kai Club. She said she was the club president, and Haimgami was a member. The next day, Takaru asked Haruko to explain the Makin Kai Club. Haruko, who was excited, immediately explained it in detail. The club was to help the student council solve all the problems among the students. Then they got information that there was a fight behind the school. It was a fight between a girl named Azuki and a new student named Kurigasa Kai. The agreement from the fight is that if Kurigasa wins, then Azuki will become his girlfriend, while if Azuki wins, then Kurigasa cannot bother her anymore. After the terms of the fight were agreed upon, Haimgami volunteered to be the referee. Azuki immediately attacked but could not hurt Kurigasa because of his Makin power. Azuki, who couldn't hurt Kurigasa's body, was immediately cornered. Takaru, who saw this, felt heartless and intended to help Azuki, but Inaho, Haruko, and Haimgami tried to prevent him because they were not allowed to interfere in the fight. However, Takaru seemed to insist on helping Azuki, and without realizing that he had unleashed a bit of his power, Takaru ran to the center of the field to block Kurigasa's punch and protect Azuki. But he bounced back, and thanks to Takaru's help, Kurigasa's eyes were distracted. So Azuki managed to kick him in the face and win the fight. Then Azuki and Haruko, who were worried about Takaru, said that he shouldn't have done that and broke the school rules, especially for trying to fight without using Makin. Takaru also apologized, but Azuki and Haruko were a little amazed by Takaru's brave actions. Even Inaho said that Takaru was very cool for being able to withstand the blow. After that, Takaru, Inaho, and Yuzui decided to join the club. Takaru said his reason for joining the club was to ensure the fight was fair. It seemed that Azuki's fight had solidified his intention. Then, they held a welcoming ceremony in the hot spring to welcome the new members. As new members, Takaru and Yuzui must train hard the next day and explore the material. It is explained that Makin is a weapon every student carries, and each Makin is connected to a certain element. That night, because he was tired of practicing and studying at the club, Takaru was massaged by Inaho and Haruko. Haimgami, who saw Takaru, was surprised because there was still no power from him. Yesterday, Haimgami felt something when Takaru protected Azuki. After that, Haimgami invited Takaru to help her the next day. The next day, Takaru waited for Haimgami's arrival in the park. Then Takaru spent his time with Haimgami, while Haimgami herself unconsciously enjoyed being with Takaru. They also didn't realize that they had been followed by Haruko, Inaho, and Yuzui all this time. Then, when they were resting on a park bench, Haimgami remembered the purpose of inviting Takaru together, which was to confirm the mark on Takaru's chest. But suddenly, a mysterious man appeared who immediately challenged Haimgami to a fight. The man immediately pulled out his signature move. Fortunately, Haimgami was able to avoid it easily. Haimgami suspected that the man was from Kamigari, but apparently, the man was just a messenger who was asked to collect strength data from all students in Tenbai. If he succeeds, then the man will be allowed to join Kamigari. Kamigari is a secret organization of Makin users who cooperate with the government, but the purpose of its activities is still unknown. Then, when Haimgami was caught off guard, she was hit by the man's attack and fell into the lake. Takaru, who saw it, immediately tried to save her. When they both sank accidentally, Takaru and Haimgami's lips touched. This made Takaru's strength rise, and he carried Haimgami out of the lake. Unexpectedly, Takaru managed to defeat the man with just one punch. <laughs> Haimgami, who saw Takaru's power rise before her eyes, felt that Takaru's power was similar to her brother's blood pointer. After the fight, Haimgami no longer considers Takaru an enemy. She also thanked Takaru and showed her feelings by kissing him. His friends there were immediately jealous of Takaru. The next day, the student council president informed her of a violent incident in the school's backyard. The victims could not remember anything, so the perpetrators could not be found. Then Takaru and Yurechi were asked to investigate the case, and they both went to the school's backyard to investigate. But after a long wait, nothing happened, and Takaru, who was starving, could no longer hold back the sound of his stomach. Finally, Yurechi gave Takaru her sandwich. After eating, and suddenly, a beautiful girl appeared who said she knew something about the violent incident. The innocent Takaru also trusted the girl without suspicion. As a result, Takaru was immediately ensnared using Makin. Apparently, she was the mastermind of all the chaos when the girl was about to attack Takaru. 
Yurachi suddenly appeared to save him. Unfortunately, Yurachi is defeated and trapped by the moves the girl uses. It turns out that the girl committing the crime was to lure the Makin Kai members to appear and challenge them to fight. Takaru tried to contact colleagues to help them use cell phones, but Yurachi forbade him. She said they should not rely on others and must solve their problems. Then, when Yurachi was about to be finished by the girl, Haruko suddenly appeared and saved them. Unexpectedly, it turns out that Haruko is the strongest girl in Tenmai Academy, and the Makin used by Haruko is Murakumo, one of the strongest Makin that can open other dimensions and absorb the opponent's Makin. After Haruko took out her Makin, the girl couldn't do anything else. The girl's Makin was destroyed easily. <laughs> Finally, they all survived. Yurechi, who was happy with Haruku's presence, immediately hugged her tightly. Aligned by Haruko's strength, Takaru became motivated to train even harder. The next day at school, Takaru and his classmates learned to control the elements. They were required to form symbols with dust in the ball, and Takaru managed to do it quite well. Minoru says that elements can be much more useful than Makin, and she immediately shows how to use elements to beat up Kurigasa, who uses Makin to harden his body. With just one punch, Minoru was able to knock Kirigasa out easily. After school, Takaru, who saw Inaho in a gloomy mood, tried to take her shopping together, and Inaho happily accepted Takaru's invitation. On the way, they got caught in the rain, and Inaho was reminded of the memories of when Takaru first met her. But Takaru couldn't remember his first meeting with Inaho, and Inaho felt sad. Takaru asked Inaho to tell him, but Inaho told Takaru to remember it himself. Then, with a sad face, Inaho asked Takaru to leave her alone in the park. After that, Inaho walked towards the mountain alone with a gloomy face. Yuzui, who accidentally saw Inaho walking in the rain while crying, immediately looked for Takaru and scolded him. Knowing that, Takaru rushed to find him. Then, elsewhere, Inaho was sad to see an abandoned cat in a cardboard box, so she petted the cat to cheer herself up. But unfortunately, suddenly, the cat ran away, leaving Inaho. Then Takaru, who was looking for Inaho, passed by the cat, and at the same time, the rock on top of the mountain cliff fell. Takaru tried to save the cat, but too many rocks fell from the cliff. Fortunately, Inaho came to save them in time. Inaho became exhausted after using her Makin powers. Takaru carried Inaho home, and on the way back, he apologized to Inaho because he had forgotten the promise from the past but he promised to get stronger so that he could always protect Inaho. Hearing this, Inaho was happy, because Takaru's promise today is exactly the same as that time. Inaho feels that Takaru's feelings haven't changed. The next day, Jen ran and rushed while looking for Takaru. It seemed that he had completed Takaru's Makin. But before Jen could explain more about the Makin, suddenly, there was a helicopter flying over Tenmai Academy. Jen, who saw it, was immediately shocked and quickly left Takaru. Then, beautiful girls appeared from the helicopter and jumped down to Tenmai Academy. In the principal's office, Minori, who was pensive, was surprised by the arrival of a mysterious man who immediately seduced Minori. Apparently, the arrival of a guy named Akaya was to exchange students, and the students who would be exchanged were the girls who had come down from the helicopter earlier. They are all called Venus, but it turns out that Akaya's real purpose is to carry out an assignment from Kamigari. Kamigari suspects that people in Tenbai are trying to free Yamada no Orochi's power. Yamada no Orochi is a Japanese mythological creature in the form of an eight-headed dragon. Minori, however, laughed out loud when she heard this, saying that Yamada no Orochi was just a myth. But Akaya assured her that Kamigari believed in the power of Yamada no Orochi. They believed that there was an evil god sleeping in Tenbai, so Akaya came there to investigate. Then, the Venus girls brought by Akaya would join Makin Kai for the summer. These Venus members were arrogant because they felt that their strength and experience had far surpassed the students at Tenbai Academy. Azuki felt those words were unacceptable and immediately challenged her to a duel to prove her strength. But since duels with members were forbidden, they judged by sports. Then, they had a volleyball match between members Makinki and Venus. The first team to get 15 points would be declared the winner. The Venus team immediately showed their extraordinary strength. They were almost cornered, did not want to lose, and brought out their strength. Then the match became increasingly fierce, their points ended in a draw, and the team that got the last two points would win in another decisive round. Their enthusiasm and emotions increasingly peaked until Demetora finally released her most powerful power. 
Haruko, who saw this, also unleashed her strongest power, and the match turned into a terrible battle. Takaru, who saw the two of them were about to destroy the place, tried to stop it. But Takaru was too late, and their power had already exploded. As a result, the sports venue was destroyed, and Takaru accidentally protected Shiria from the falling debris. Celia, who saw Takaru doing that for her, immediately blushed and considered Mr. Takaru her knight. The Venus girls apologized for getting carried away and thanked Takaru for saving one of their friends. Finally, the match ended in a draw, with them recognizing each other's strengths. The next day, the Venus girls were placed in their respective classes, and it turned out that Takaru was in the same class as Celia. Then Celia saw Takaru in her class and hugged him, of course, this made Inaho jealous. She immediately separated Celia and said that she was Takaru's fiancé. But Celia announced that Celia would be Takaru's girlfriend from then on. But this made Takaru so ganged up on by all the male students who felt jealous. Furthermore, Celia, who was gathering with the Venus girls, wanted to date Takaru. Then, her friends agreed to help Celia and began investigating Takaru. After that, Celia sent a love letter to Takaru and invited him to meet without writing her name. Takaru was curious about the girl who sent the letter and immediately rushed to meet her. To launch Celia's dating mission, the other Venus members tried to help Celia and distract Inaho, Haruko, and Haimgami. They even managed to trick Inaho with Candy and Takaru's fake doll. Thanks to the help of her friends, Celia managed to date Takaru safely. Then she took Takaru to a building. Suddenly, Takaru was tied to a chair in that building and could not escape. Across the street, Haruko and Haimgami, who were dealing with Ming, saw Inaho carrying Takaru's doll. Inaho thought Takaru was unwell because he stopped moving, and then Haimgami managed to reveal the Venus girl's plan by stealing the strategy word carried by Ming. Haruko and Inaho, who read the paper, immediately panicked and rushed to find Takaru. Then Haruko started thinking about the things that Takaru and Celia would do. Arriving at the building, Haruko and Inaho realized that they had misunderstood. It turned out that Takaru was tied to the chair to listen to Celia, who was singing. A few days later, Yuzui petitioned the student council president to combine the male and female swimming classes. Of course, this is so that they have a perfect school experience. Yuzui even incites all the male students to support his plan. Yuzui also proposes a water cavalry competition to them to determine the decision. And if the male team wins, then the male and female swimming classes will be merged. The Tenbai students, who love competition, accepted Yuzui's challenge and prepared for the competition. The water cavalry competition to merge the swimming clubs began, with all the students watching and supporting their teams, each consisting of six groups led by a teacher. The rules were that whoever lost their headband first and the rider fell into the water would be considered a forfeit. Both teams were very excited about the competition. Yuzui, who already had a plan to win the competition, according to Yuzui's instructions, Inaho would be Takaru's opponent because, according to Yuzui, Inaho would be weak against Takaru. However, this was wrong because suddenly Inaho fought back fiercely. But Yuzui had predicted this. Yuzui ordered Takaru to whisper something to Inaho if he was about to lose. Inaho, who heard Takaru's whisper, immediately blushed and was caught off guard. Then Takaru managed to outwit her and took Inaho's headband easily. It seemed like the boys' strategy was working well, and they were ahead on points. They had managed to take the headbands of the strongest people from the girls' team, Haimgami and Haruko. The match was fierce until the two teams only left one representative, Takaru and Celia. The one-on-one -on -one duel that determined the victory was inevitable. Celia asked the Demitor as she was riding to use the power of the water Makin, and they advanced by riding a very powerful water wave. Unfortunately, Demitora suddenly stopped in the middle of the road because she saw a beautiful girl named Minerva, who was suddenly there. As a result, Celia fell into Takaru's arms, and Takaru stole her headband. Finally, the competition was won by the male team. Then, Demitora said that Minerva, the last member of Venus, had arrived and their mission to investigate the abilities of Tenbai students would begin. The next day, Takaru and Yuzui were even more excited to enjoy the first day of the combined swimming class. But things don't seem to be going according to their expectations, as they can only hear and feel the girls' presence, but they can't see their forms. Apparently, it was all because the girls asked for help from Makin, one of the male students, to make them invisible. As a result, Takaru, Yuzui, 
and all the male students could not enjoy the beautiful scenery they had dreamed of. A few days later, while on the school field, Yuzui and Takaru suddenly saw a girl quarreling with a student of punk, and the punk then challenged the girl to a duel and told Takaru, who was there to be the referee. Their fight began. The punk looked confident and launched his first attack, but the girl managed to control the man's body using Makin. The girl can create a doll that resembles her enemy, and whatever she does to the doll will have an impact 100 times worse on her enemy. Takaru, who saw the fight, immediately stopped it, but the girl refused and instead made a doll resembling Takaru to attack and control Takaru. However, Takaru tried to fight back, and with that strong fighting spirit, he got out of the girl's control. Unfortunately, the girl does not accept Takaru's resistance and immediately launches a deadly attack to kill Takaru. Luckily, Minerva came and asked the girl to stop, which saved Takaru's life. But the girl asked Minerva not to interfere with her business and told her to just focus on her mission because she would report it to her grandfather. Apparently, the girl named Ottoheim was the granddaughter of the Kamigari leader, and after finishing scolding Minerva, Ottoheim immediately left them all. After that, Takaru, who was summoned by the student council because Ottoheim's fight yesterday had caused many complaints, was shown. Plus, Minori reported that Takaru received the lowest score in the element control class. Because failing the element exam tomorrow could tarnish Makin Kai's good name, he would be expelled from the Makin Kai club. Then Yuzui, Inaho, Haruko, and Hangami tried to comfort Takaru and find a solution. And suddenly Minerva appeared and proposed that they all help Takaru practice together and go to a training camp. Finally, they all agreed to gather at Takaru's dormitory to help him train, after which Takaru and Yuzui went to the forest to train there. After trying hard, Takaru finally managed to control the element as he wanted, and even Hangami, who supervised Takaru's training, felt that Takaru's element level had increased. Then Aimgami felt the presence of someone watching her from afar, and it turned out to be Minerva. Apparently, all this time, Heimgami realized that Minerva was watching her. Plus, Minerva can find Heimgami's true figure. It turns out that Heimgami is the one who has the power of Yamada no Orochi, which Kamigari has been looking for. Venus was ordered to bring Heimgami back to Kamigari before her existence destroyed the Seal of Heaven. But it seems Minerva has also found another person who has spiritual energy similar to Heimgami's, Takaru. She also intends to take Takaru with her, but because Minerva is still curious about Tenbai Academy, she decides to stay longer. The next day, thanks to his hard training overnight, Takaru passed the elemental control test easily, so he was not expelled from the Makinki Club. Takaru was in Minori's room with Jen, who had just finished fitting Takaru's special Makin. Takaru's Makin power makes the enemy lose control of his Makin, and Takaru's Makin can only be used when the enemy also uses Makin in battle. Then, Takaru also promised to become stronger before more enemies arrived. Finally, summer vacation was getting closer. Yuzui and Takaru had imagined that they would vacation on the beach with beautiful and sexy girls. However, their hopes were dashed because it turned out that the club had no cash for a vacation. So the club members tried to make some extra money by moonlighting at the school's waiter's cafe, which had become very crowded since arrival. It seems that the promotion of the waiter's cafe went smoothly because of the charm of the Makin Kai members who took part in the side job there. Then, one day, Haruko suddenly felt jealous of Inaho and Takaru's closeness. She then went to be alone on a bridge. At that moment, a mysterious figure wearing a mask attacked Haruko. Takaru also came to save Haruko and tried his new Makin power. But unfortunately, Takaru could not use his Makin because the figure did not use his Makin. Fortunately, Azuki suddenly appeared to save Takaru and Haruko, who were being pressed. Then, when the figure was opened, the face of the owner of the waiter cafe where Takaru and the others worked appeared. Minori and Jen, who were there, also explained that it was all the work of Kamigari because Kamigari had often controlled students in Tenbai to seize Tenbai Academy. Then, we are shown that the mastermind of the incident is Ottoheim. She seems to be still curious about Takaru's strength. Even Ottoheim gets support from her grandfather, the leader of Kamigari, to carry out her plan. Her grandfather sent King Kaio to help Ottoheim carry out her plan. The next day, while at school, Takaru gets news from Heimgami that Haruko suddenly disappeared, and her whereabouts are unknown. Then, Takaru, worried about Haruko, immediately looked for her all over the school. But Takaru instead meets a girl being controlled by Kamigari who says that Takaru has to come to the top of Amanohara alone to save Haruko. Then Takaru rushed to the top of Amanohara to save Haruko. 
When he arrived, Takaru met King Kaio, who was waiting for him. Then, Takaru saw the figure of Haruko, who was held captive by Ottoheim in her Macon control. She even threatened to hurt Haruko if Takaru did not obey her. Finally, inevitably, Takaru had to fight with King Kaio and was forced to show his strength. But Takaru couldn't do anything and only became King Kaio's punching bag. Takaru felt desperate, remembered the bitter memories of losing his loved ones, and could not do anything. It turned out that Takaru had lost his mother because she was attacked by someone unknown, and he could not save her. That has made Takaru always want to protect the people he cares about, and Takaru, afraid of losing Haruko, is trying to awaken his power. He finally received the evil power sealed at the peak of Amanohara, unfortunately. When Takaru received the power into his body, he lost control of himself. After that, Takaru flew towards Tenbai Academy to destroy the school building and attack the Makin Kai members he met. Takaru, with all the evil power that abounds in him, cannot be stopped by anyone. Even the other Makinki members cannot get close because their elemental energy will be absorbed by Takaru if they are near him. Then, elsewhere, Haruko, who was locked up by Ottoheim, was suddenly saved by Demetora. Kamigari apparently ordered Akaya and the Venus members to stop Ottoheim from destroying Academy Tenbai. Plus, it appears that the Venus members already love Academy Tenbai and want to help protect it. Then Minerva also made an interdimensional door for Haruko to return to Tenmai Academy. On the other hand, Takaru was already rampaging on the field and was about to unleash his greatest power to destroy everything in front of him. But suddenly, from the sky, a light came down to the field, and it turned out to be Haruko. Haruko tried to defeat Takaru and used Mirakumo. Haruko's Makin Mirakumo is the holiest of the eight Makin and is believed to be able to destroy evil elements. Haruko immediately attacked Takaru, and when the Mirakumo sword touched Takaru's body, Takaru's power suddenly exploded, and the evil power was gone. Finally, they both survived, and Takaru ended up in Haruko's arms. Haruko, who realized this, immediately cried to see Takaru, who was fine. After that, King Kaio and her troops suddenly came to offer Takaru to join Kamigari. But Takaru refused and chose to protect Academy Tenbai. King Kaio said that Kamigari would not give up and would continue to watch them. King Kaio also said that she would come back again someday. Since that incident, Takaru's determination to become stronger has increased. Finally, Takaru, Inaho, and Haruko routinely run training every morning, and the Makin Kai members also do a good job of caring for problems and maintaining peace at Tenbai Academy.